Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the founder of this wonderful conference in Gestalt, Mark Benegger. Hey, Mark. Yes, pleasure to be here. Nice that we can host you, Phil. Oh, well, Mark, it's such a joy. And the fact that the Longevity Investors Conference is happening for the first time in real life is very exciting. Um, this is a big milestone for you as an organization. You've got a lot of very important people in town today. How does it feel as the organizer? Yeah, it's great. I mean, when Tobias and myself uh, had the idea two years ago to organize an investors-only conference focusing on longevity, it was more like uh, yeah, an idea. And uh, due to COVID, uh, for the last two years, the event only took place uh, virtually, unfortunately. So that's why for us, it's even if it's the third conference, it's like the first real one and uh, yeah we're really excited about uh, the next two days so let's talk about your background um you you made a lot of uh moves in the crypto market when it was early um obviously crypto and longevity are quite an interesting combination of the two markets there's a lot of interest in both how do you find the uh the parallels between your experiences of being an early mover in crypto and what's happening in longevity now does it feel the same yeah, very similar. I mean, maybe I have to mention that I, before crypto, started my first uh, internet company in 99, before I explored Bitcoin in 2012. So it's literally the third uh, time where I see, let's say, uh, uh, emerging uh, industry evolving. And it feels every time very similar, right? You have uh, some technological breakthroughs, in this case, maybe scientific breakthroughs, which are literally causing a paradigm shift. But normally, even by seeing that something is happening, uh, it's in the first stage only the pioneers who are really understanding what, what might happen. And then normally it takes some years, so I would say we're definitely close to the very early days uh, of the internet revolution and also the very, very early days of the digital asset revolution. So to put it in comparison, I think we're really in the very first uh, inning of, of uh, what everything, what's, what's uh, going to happen going forward. Yeah, well, I guess that um, in terms of where we are as an industry, of course, uh, we're absorbed with this every day. Um, we live and breathe longevity. But uh, with the Maximon uh, business that you operate with your partner, Tobias, and uh, a, a raft of very talented colleagues, what is the strategy that you have behind the business? Is it, is it to be early stage? Is it to be close to market? What's your thesis for, for what you're doing with Maximon? Yeah, when we started to look closely uh, into the whole market as entrepreneurs and investors, we just realized there's not that much going on yet. And that was ultimately uh, the decision to start companies together with other founders ourselves as a company builder. So Maximum is not a venture capitalist, we're a company builder. So as entrepreneurs, we really help these entrepreneurs to build longevity related companies from scratch. And the other differentiator is that we really focus on the short term perspective because we see a lot of very exciting scientific and evidence backed uh, fields where longevity can be monetized today as we speak. So we're not yet aiming for the moonshots and we're not the biotech uh, company builder. So we really try to focus on the low hanging fruits. So when you say low hanging fruit, this is companies uh, that are going to get close to market within perhaps one or two years? Yeah, ideally. I mean, uh, our first company, Avea, in less than a year from the foundation, we launched uh, our first products and generated revenues from day one. So that's a little bit like a, a role model, right? Yeah. And uh, all the businesses we're looking into and the industries and fields have to somehow a mid to short term uh, way to monetize the services or products. So how does it work when you, as a company builder, you must have a methodology. So I'd be interested to know, uh, number one, you know, what types of companies are you looking for? What are the assets that you're looking for? And then what do you do with those companies to build them into your accelerator? Yeah, I mean, there are two approaches. I think ultimately as an entrepreneur myself, I think the most crucial part is always the people. So ideally, and that's what's uh, happening now as we speak every week, we get approached by sometimes really amazing researchers and scientists who are working on longevity in their labs. And they have sometimes amazing uh, developments happening without knowing uh, from the outside. But they miss somebody who literally makes the whole uh, yeah, lab-oriented work tangible and monetizable. And that's then our role. We build the bridge. Mm -hmm. So ideally, it's really the people the knowledge, the science behind where we can build a company around. So when you get a scientist, for example, they're not necessarily going to be a natural entrepreneur. Some of them are, of course. Mm -hmm. So what do you wrap around them? Do you support them with 
commercialization infrastructure, finance support, that type of thing? How does it work? Yeah, it's literally everything you need as a first-time entrepreneur. So we go to the notary public to found the company together, nice. which is, if you did it several dozen times, maybe not uh, that spectacular anymore. But if you do it for the first time, it's quite a unique experience and you don't really know how it works. We help with uh, everything from a legal framework, finance, HR, nitty-gritty stuff like VAT, taxes, uh, something most entrepreneurs don't like, but you still have to somehow do it properly, right? And then it goes further, communication, how to find additional colleagues, co-founders, how to incentivize them, how to generally build a long-term business plan, strategy. So literally every uh, element which is essential to build a company from scratch. So you've already proven the model, so you've taken your um, your early stage activities, you say, with uh, your first portfolio companies there, they're coming out into the marketplace and a few, I understand, are coming to market soon. Mm -hmm. So what's next for Maximon? Are you looking to scale up now? Are you looking to, to take this model and, and push it harder? Yeah, that's definitely our plan. I mean, we, we launched uh, the whole company Maximon uh, roughly one and a half years ago. It took us literally one year to build the foundation and to start our first company. And now the plan is to build three to five companies every year. So we identified quite a few fields. We are in touch with a lot of interesting people. We received uh, close to 5,000 applications already this year. So we have a huge talent pool, right? And going forward, the idea is literally as a company builder to build several companies in this field. Sometimes, as you mentioned, very close to market, maybe in the future also a little bit with a more moonshot approach. And our vision and mission is really to make uh, the idea behind longevity tangible for everybody as soon as possible. Mm. So I understand that when you look at the portfolio, you have um, migration into clinical services, you obviously have um, software and, and, and analytics, you have supplements. Um, is this the kind of uh, categorization that you're looking at? Or when you say moonshots, are there other things that you're starting to look at and think about in relation to the context of longevity? Yeah, you could say we look at certain elements of, or let's say at the humans, for example, microbiome, I think big topic, yeah. microbiome longevity, skin longevity. There you have a certain uh, intersection with beauty, but maybe beauty is just a side effect of the longevity when you look uh, into the skin, right? So all kind of elements, senior living, we look at the, the whole developments in a very um, broad perspective. So not just longevity from a science perspective, but also the economic and societal effects of the mega trend of longevity. So how older elderly people still being very active, retired, but not yet sitting uh, without any uh, yeah, uh, reasoning to do uh, what, what, what's missing there, right? So it's really a very holistic approach and that's why we see a lot of uh, opportunities where we can uh, start businesses going forward. And ultimately with every invention, every breakthrough, I think it opens up additional opportunities. That's why from our side, I think to really capitalize uh, the maximum of this whole development, uh, company builder is an ideal structure. Mm, great. Now let's, let's also talk about the, the prize that you're announcing. So you've got mm -hmm. the Maximum Longevity Prize, which obviously, as you mentioned, you've got 5,000 people are, are coming to your organization anyway. So this must be very high profile. Could you talk us through what's happening with that? Yeah, I mean, the main drivers behind the, the prize is uh, Elizabeth, our chief medical officer, and Tobias, my co-founder. And the idea when we announced the prize, uh, it's a uh, 50,000 prize um, uh, to really award all these scientists which are working in their labs but maybe without any visibility to make it also financially lucrative um, to share their knowledge not just uh, to get an additional publication or some fame but to really get money to make uh, these developments tangible maybe together with us but it's completely separate from uh, the conference and maximum so we have an independent jury with very well-known uh, scientists in the field and yeah it's definitely one of the highlights of uh, our conference. Great well Mark the the work that you and Tobias and all the rest of your colleagues are putting into Maximon as well as the conference is really appreciated it's going to be spectacular and I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks yeah. for joining us today. Thanks for your support thank you Phil.